November 15th, 2021. Habcast 186. Episode 186. Let's go. Happy Monday, you guys. Hope everyone's week got off to a great start. Of course, I have a few things to share with you. An evening of reflection. Let's do it. Alex Jones liable for damages over Sandy Hook shooting claims judge rules. Now, Alex Jones is uh, he's the host of InfoWars, and I've seen the show and uh, a lot of the content Alex Jones talks about, which is mostly like politics and news. Uh, it has a lot of viability to it. A lot of the stuff he says makes a lot of sense, and a lot of the stuff is true, but he can be a little extreme at times with his delivery and some of the things he say, like, some things you just can't run with it. You got to take it with a grain of salt. And in this case, I remember he was talking about the Sandy Hook uh, shootings. And um, he was saying that they were actors. They were staged. And that I also believe he was saying that nobody really died. And that it was all like a false flag operation. And for people that actually lost kids and uh, loved ones in that, that kind of hit, that hit hard. That was way back in like 20. Well, Alex Jones liable for damages over Sandy Hook shooting claims. Judge rules uh, court in Connecticut will determine uh, amount conspiracy theorists must pay over claims that school massacre was a hoax. And when you get a platform that big went to the point where you become an, an alternative news source, it's real easy for the lines to get blurred when you're delivering certain types of information. The conspiracy theorist Alex Jones was found liable today for damages and lawsuits uh, bought by parents of children killed in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting over Jones's claim that it was a hoax. 21st grade children aged five and six and six adults were killed in the shooting in Newton, Connecticut in 2012. Uh, the 20 year old gunman killed his mother before the shooting and killed himself as police arrived at the school the shooting was portrayed on on jones info war show as a hoax involving actors uh aimed at increasing gun control they're trying to take our guns i remember saying that uh i remember hearing him saying that jones has since acknowledged the shooting did occur so he did try to uh like retract the statement he did try to retract it but by then when uh when you're that big you get it gets legs and it goes so far that you some things you just can't take back uh families of victims said they have been subjected to harassment and death threats from jones's followers because of the hoax conspiracy broadcast on infowars they sued jones and his companies in courts in connecticut and texas for defamation and infliction of emotional uh, distress in Connecticut on Monday. Today, Judge Barbara Bellis took the rare step of defaulting the InfoWars host in the defamation lawsuits for his and his company's failure to produce critical material information that the plaintiffs need to prove their claims. Uh, the default means the judge found in favor of the parents and will hold a hearing on how much damages Jones has paid. Lawyers for the parents claim Jones and his companies, including InfoWars and Free Speech Systems, violated court rules by failing to turn over documents, including internal records, uh, showing how and if Jones and InfoWars profited from talking about the school shooting and other mass shootings. I don't think he was looking to profit off of it because that show, like it, it, uh, it has like its own products. Like, I don't think just off the, the stories alone that they make money off of that. They have like their own advertising, their pattern of defying and ignoring court orders to produce responsive information is well established. Lawyers for the family wrote in a court brief in uh, in July. Jones lawyers deny violating court rules on document disclosure and have asked that Bellis be removed from the case, alleging she has not been impartial. Christopher Matei 
A lawyer for relatives of eight victims who sued Jones in Connecticut said what's clear from Judge Bellis's ruling is that Alex Jones and the Jones defendants have engaged in a long, continuous course of misconduct in this case designed to prevent the plaintiffs from getting evidence about Mr. Jones's business and about his motives for publishing lies about them and their families. A Texas judge recently issued similar rulings against Jones in three defamation lawsuits, finding Jones liable for damages after defaulting him and his companies for not turning over documents. You can say what you want. It's free speech, okay? It's free speech. You can say what you want, but you can't say what you want. <laughs> Plagues strike Egypt, sudden floods, then four-inch scorpions called death stalkers. And if this isn't a smorgasbord for these end-of-the-world hugging doomsayers, I don't know what is. It sounds like a movie that The Rock was into, kind of. <laughs> Swept from desert burrows, hundreds, if not thousands, of scorpions skittered into villages, stinging at least 503 people. Uh, this is in Cairo. First came the lightning that strobe lit the Nile skies, uh, pale purpley gray. What happened next? Check all the boxes for fierce storm, heavy rain, thunder, and flash flooding that sent people scurrying for dry land and crumpled mud brick houses around Aswan, the largest city in southern Egypt. Then came the scorpion. There were hundreds, if not thousands, yellowish four inches with as many as six pairs of eyes and a tail full of venom so toxic that the species is known unscientifically as the death stalker. Swept from their desert burrows by the rains, they came skittering into mountainside villages and burst into homes through cracks and the walls, stinging at least 503 people on Friday night alone, according to local officials. In the final analysis, the storm that detonated over Aswan with biblical fury, <laughs> it is kind of giving Moses, isn't it? About 9.30 p.m. on Friday inflicted its worst damage with flooding. Three people died, and local officials said 103 homes were partly or fully destroyed, though residents said the real toll was far greater. On um, Today, thousands of people were still doubling up with neighbors or sleeping outside as they tried to salvage whatever they could from the rubble. Uh, in a show of discontent rare for Egypt, where most dissent is suppressed by security forces, Roughly a dozen protesters demonstrated in front of the Aswan governor's office on Monday over the lack of electricity, water, or any government assistance. Death stalker scorpions, or as they are known to scientists, the Urias Quinquen Castricia. What? <laughs> no way. No, I'll try it one more time. Death stalker scorpions, or as they are known to scientists, as the Urias Queen. Castriatus are part of daily life for Aswanis, especially in the summer when scorpions tend to be more active. They scamper the streets, lurk under stones, and trespass homes, nestling in shoes and beneath blankets. That would scare the hell out of me. That would scare me is that uh, because most arachnids and a scorpion is an arachnid, uh, they, like, uh, they like dark places. They like to be in hiding all the time. And you hear about uh, people getting bit by spiders that are hidden in their shoes and they turn out to be deadly spiders and they like to be in pockets and anywhere where it's dark. Dozens of scorpion stings are reported in the area each year. If stung, everyone knows a trip to the hospital for a shot of antivenom and a few days recovery will take care of it. Toxins isolated from death stalker venom are currently used in laboratory research and in cancer treatment where they can be used to paint tumor cells in the brain during surgery, highlighting them for removal. Wow. Cambridge mayor arrested, charged with 50 counts of distributing revenge porn. Now, if you're a mayor, and like most mayors across the country, you have free run of all the hookers in the land <laughs> as far as the light touches. <laughs> or if you want to be lazy, you have your free pick of interns and secretaries to grope. What are you mad about? that you have to do revenge porn. And Andrew Bradshaw, the mayor of Andrew Bradshaw, the mayor of Cambridge on Maryland's Easter Shore have been charged. Andrew Bradshaw, 
the mayor of Cambridge on Maryland's Easter Shore. Andrew Bradshaw, the mayor of Cambridge on Maryland's Eastern Shore, has been charged with 50 counts of distributing explicit. So once is not enough for you. What did she do to you that you had to do it 50 times? Just click, 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 click. Uh, explicit images of a former romantic partner without her consent on social media site Reddit. And it's Reddit on top of that. What question did you have to ask on Reddit for somebody to answer with 50 porn videos? <laughs> a Dorchester County Circuit judge ordered him held without bond Monday afternoon. According to online court records, uh, Bradshaw faces up to a $5,000 fine and two years in prison for each count. That's a hundred years. Shit. <laughs> that same energy that you took to post 50 videos of your ex having sex without her permission. You could have got on Reddit and found a girlfriend. Prosecutors say Bradshaw 32 used a variety of usernames featuring the victim's name and birth date to post nude images with racist and sexually explicit captions on a number of Reddit forums. You had a whole lot of energy, man. She must have hurt you, man. <laughs> he must. She must have really hurt him. On May 14th, the victim, who prosecutors say was previously in a romantic relationship with Bradshaw, contacted law enforcement about the images and said they were posted without her consent According to charging documents, she told law enforcement that Bradshaw was the only person to whom she'd ever sent the photographs. In investigators determined that the Reddit posts were sent from an IP address that provided internet service to Bradshaw's home. According to charging documents, you were supposed to do like all other mayors do, use an intern's laptop. The state prosecutor's office said the mayor's alleged conduct violated Maryland's revenge porn statute. Using someone's private images without their consent is a serious breach of trust and invasion of privacy. And the power and breadth of the internet makes such a violation even more egregious. State prosecutor Charlton Howard said in a news release, our office is committed to protecting victims from those who abuse their positions of power. David Deutsch. Cambridge's acting city manager said the city commissioners will be meeting with the city attorney about Bradshaw shortly to examine the city charter and code to see what options exist. He's done. He's done. And if any action needs to be taken, yeah, they're going to boot him out. That's likely to take place before the commissioner's uh, next meeting, December 13th. He said the only thing is that since he's a mayor, they probably want to do it a little bit more formal, a little bit more professional. But who's going to listen to you? If your ability to lead the city as a mayor hasn't been compromised, it's definitely your trust. People's ability to have trust in you. And that's like the whole part of being a leader in anything is people being able to trust you. So, yeah, he's done. Don't be mad. Yo, don't be mad at these men. Don't be mad at these women when they break up with you and you want to post their intimates. And their new photos, just go ahead. If you got all that much energy, you know what you do? You hit the gym, you read a book, you go shopping, you do something. Like, yeah, find, put, yeah, put that energy into something else. Hell has no fury. Woman tried to torch ex-boyfriend's car using Molotov cocktail and trash can fire. Investigators say she is a keeper. <laughs> to love someone that much to make an, 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 an improvised device. Sierra Zendet Flores, 35, faces a count of arson online record show. According to an affidavit for an arrest warrant, Flores was set to be evicted by Friday from the ex's home. You're crazy. You got to go. <laughs> ex visited a friend on Saturday. I'm going to leave. And when I come back, I want you gone. Fair enough, right? No. <laughs> The ex visited a friend on Saturday and stayed the night there, authorities said. Uh, surveillance footage showed Flores' vehicle driving by early Sunday morning at 5.19 a.m. Investigators said a Molotov cocktail is a, where the hell did she learn how to make one of those? <laughs> is, is observed being thrown adjacent to the victim's vehicle. The investigator wrote mere minutes later, she drove by again and parked approximately 20 feet from the uh, from the ex's vehicle. The affidavit stated uh, she walked up to the ex's work vehicle, not the work vehicle. 
not the work car, and set another fire to the driver's side area. They said, yo, she, <laughs> a woman on a mission. Do you think Rose's? Would uh would help smooth things over. They said the ex boyfriend realized his vehicle was on fire, ran toward it, and drove it away from the fire. It sustained damage to the driver's side, including a tire. Uh, authorities said investigators said Flores admitted to wrongdoing under questioning. She allegedly said she made a Molotov cocktail. Where the hell did she get that from? The defendant admits to purchasing about one dollar worth of gasoline from a corner store. How much did they give her? <laughs> near the fire scene and then pours the gasoline this much thing <laughs> into a plastic bottle with stuff into the neck of the bottle oh man she drove to her ex's car through the cocktail but missed in this version of events then the defendant stated that she wanted to change her mind about what she had done and returns to the scene authority said the cocktail did not burn the vehicle you failed this in this account but instead of stopping Flores allegedly grabbed a small trash can from her car, lit it on fire using gasoline, and put it on the... She's really committed to the gasoline thing, to the fire. Yeah. Not a, not a key, not key to your car, you piece of shit. Or <laughs> not a bust of windows, not a pop of tires. This has to be fire. That is something about passion. Yes. The defendant stated that she had to stop because she had to wash the gasoline smell off her hands authority said flores allegedly said she was upset over her treatment over their six-year relationship whoa six years six years and we're still talking about boyfriend uh boyfriend ex-boyfriend whatever the only thing she did wrong in that case was probably to to stay there long enough to get mad about being strung along for six years <laughs> a tiktoker has been described as evil for making her cheating ex-boyfriend get her name tattooed on his arm before ghosting him straight after what I love it. It's nonviolent and it, 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 it leaves a point. The woman, known only as Lana, posted a video to her TikTok account last week showing her ex getting inked up inside a tattoo parlor while she watches with a coy look on her face. <laughs> she knows what it is when your POS ex piece of shit ex wants you back so you tell him to get your name tatted on him but plan on ghosting him immediately afterwards i love this girl yeah lana captioned the clip which has been viewed uh 1.4 million times the video did not feature the finished tattoo i would love to see that so it's unclear whether lana is being truthful about her purported prank the woman claiming to be the man's current friend daniela cariola left a comment beneath the tiktok video verifying the tawdry tattoo tail don't be mad <laughs> because every time you look at his that tattoo of the other girl yeah this video was done march of 2021 before we even met i make fun of him for it she did not confirm whether her bow had cheated on lana he cheated come on why else would she do that meanwhile many viewers praised lana for her tattoo trick with one hailing it as a boss move yes it was i want i would love to see the stats on how many people that got a tattoo of their ex and not their current. That would be great. Uh, fun show. Fun show. Fun show. That being said, I'm going to wrap this up. I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Adios.